the core ideas of creating a content or a resource. Now with the uh, process of content creation comes the idea of instructional designing and storyboards are considered as the blueprints for instructional designing. Let's find out more about instructional designing with special emphasis on script writing and storyboarding. For this, I would like to invite our expert of the evening, Dr. Monica Nagpar, who is working as senior academic consultant at CID and CRT. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you and welcome to all of you for this uh, session. Uh, so this is basically, uh, this session is going to be a very base for our coming sessions because based on this, we will be planning for our e-content when we are actually going to create one. The e-content can be in any format. You have uh, in the morning session with Dr. Prachi, you've seen variety of e-contents. There are different ways of uh, creating e-content. We can see them all, we can use them all in different ways in our classroom situations. So for that, we need to have an understanding that how to start creating any e-content. And when we uh, start creating any kind of e-content, then what uh, uh, preparations we need to uh, do in the beginning of creating any e-content. So for that, I'll be sharing uh, my screen with all of you and we'll go through a small presentation. We will also see uh, some examples where we will uh, first see the resource and then we will see how it has been made. What was the uh, process? What was the script? How the storyboard was made? And based on that, how the e-content finally came out as a useful e-content to all of us. So here, uh, as you are not all aware that process of developing digital content we are discussing. So before getting into the technical aspects of creating e-content, we need to understand first the pedagogical out, uh, aspect of e-content. First of all, whenever we are creating e-content, we have to have certain objective in mind. We, uh, when we go to the classroom as a teacher also, we create a lesson plan. That is the planning of your classroom, where you have learning objectives, where you have learning outcomes, where you have certain ways of uh, teaching, which you are explaining through which you are explaining uh, teaching methodologies, you are uh, following what learning theories you are keeping in mind for delivering that particular topic. We all consider that when we are preparing a lesson plan. Similarly, we have to get into all those pedagogical aspects when we are going to create any e-content. First of all, we are going to identify a topic or a theme on which we are going to create an e-content. What are the objectives of this? Say, for example, if you want to just bring in basic awareness about that topic or you want to uh, bring in detailed analysis, you want to uh, uh, increase the level of understanding of one particular topic, this you have to mind and then you have to also think about the theories the way of presentation basically will come here that how this learning is going to reach to the learners and also our learners are not one type of learner we as an individual are every person is different and the way of learning and teaching to every individual is different their learning styles are different one person will uh, learn better when we are going to demonstrate something. The other student will learn better when he or she is uh, maybe shown a video. So we have to see all those aspects also. So individual differences are also to be kept in mind. And also uh, now, as Dr. Bharti has already introduced us towards the uh, uh, accessibility, then we have to consider a resource from that aspect also that most of the learners at least can get benefited from the resource. So all these pedagogical consideration, you have to first uh, think when you are planning for a topic and then you can move ahead. Now, once you have got into this, now you have to see the developmental process of an educational program. For any, uh, maybe a commercial program, it can be a different process altogether. 
but yes the steps can be of course overlapping and similar but the process would be quite a lot different because here the aim is different so first of all is once you have decided the topic then you have to decide or know who your audience are so basically this part the first part is we are creating a program brief what we are going to do in our final uh, resource so that is called a program brief who is my audience say for example a class 7 child is or your audience fine very well uh, iterated that your a uh, class you are making a content for a class 7 child but what is the background he or she is coming from what language he or she is following what is the cultural setup in which he or she is living what is the psychological level of learner uh, who is going to use this particular e content we have to answer all these queries these all comes under know your audience uh, uh, parameter so here class 7 child may be a hindi speaking or an english speaking uh, coming from jnk or coming from lakshadweep or coming from tripura or coming from maybe rajasthan so based on that we will be deciding our different content presentation then a child uh, we are we are we aiming for a gifted child are we aiming for a slow learner are we aiming for a middle path or how we are uh, what is the level of my learning all this i have to keep in mind now when i am creating a content for jnk then my language would be according to that and also my examples for that particular topic would be according to that so in case of jnk if a child is coming from baramula say for example then he might not be knowing about the train because he has not traveled in the train any time so we can't give an example of train to a child who has never seen it or the flora fauna of pondicherry or maybe kerala cannot be shared with the uh, jnk uh, child because that is not the first thing which he administers so we have to keep in mind our examples based on our target audience now topic and theme we have selected and now we are researching on the content in this in in terms that what content we are going to cover in that particular uh, e content which we are going to create and what will be the sequence of the content how we are going to present it say for example we know the maxims of teaching you must have heard or you must have learned during your bed days maxim of teaching basically says we are coming from easy to difficult or overall to the smaller chunks of information or from smaller chunks of information to an bigger information so based on the topic based on the learner we are going to decide which maxim of teaching we are going to follow here how we are going to sequence our content are we going to relate it with the previous knowledge and then add in small bits and pieces to the new information or are we going to give a broader perspective and then come out to a smaller information that we want to give is up to a teacher and up to a content which we are going to present to a learner then the presentation format presentation format you will be learning quite a bit in detail in uh, the coming session this is basically what say for example today i am teaching today you must be hearing all the theoretical sessions so this is one way of presentation which is lecture method next day you will be doing hands on you will be doing a practice so we will be giving a demonstration method using demonstration method we will be telling you something and then you will be practicing on that right so this way what method you want to choose you want to choose a lecture you want to choose a discussion you want to bring in an interview you want to bring in a documentary you want to bring in docu drama what format of presentation you want to use for your particular content is up to a teacher and up to the content along with the learner what a learner need now for example i'll take another example that if my audience is primary level and i am going to use a lecture method it won't work and for a 12th class child if i'm going to show a very animated movie then it is also not going to work so we have to understand the learner and then the presentation format has to be decided now once we have decided on all this 
here we have to focus on one, one more thing that we have to hold the attention of the child or the learner. So based on the age group, the background, we have to uh, bring in the music, we have to bring in the sound effects, fun, humor, or activities, whatever is required, we have to bring in that based on the learners of the content. Then we have to bring in interactivity. Interactivity is always welcomed at any level. Say if, whether it is a primary level, uh, whether it is a primary level or it is a secondary level or a senior secondary level. When a person interacts, he or she learns more. And it gets our involvement of our children in the learning process. So we have to be very careful about the interactivity. It should not be, say for example, even if it is a video, even if uh, a teacher is simply giving a lecture, we can at the least, we can involve a lot of images. We can bring in a lot of images to demonstrate or show what we are teaching. Or we can also add many graphics in that so that a learner is not getting bored. He or she is getting, we are able to basically uh, hold the attention of the learner. Now, these were the basic processes when we are going into any kind of content development. Now we are coming on to the script. So for a film, the script can be something very different, but for a educational program, it is based on the educational content. So here, a script should be with an attractive start. It should not be very boring. You should start with a very positive and you know, influencing words so that a learner or uh, whether it's a young learner or an elder learner, get attracted to it. They give their attention. So basically what we call in our lesson planning is uh, get, gaining attention, which is, which is Gane's first level of instruction. Based on that, we are going to have an attractive start of the script so that we can gain the attention of our learners. Then the clarity of the concept is the next point. Once the script has started, the concept has to be introduced. Concept should be introduced very clearly. It should not confuse. There should not be a two-way communication in the sense that uh, one, once I'm saying one thing and the, in the second sentence, I am saying something else. So the first thing which have been said, the concept should be very clearly uh, spelled out. Then objective-based content. Of course, as I mentioned earlier in that objective of the program, objective of the content which we are teaching should be very, uh, should be, uh, uh, explained well in advance. Then known to unknown approach. This is what I said as our previous knowledge and adding new knowledge with the previous knowledge. So when we know something, as in the today's session, I asked you what is copyright? Have you heard this term? So I was trying to know you first and then was adding my own knowledge to it. Similarly, the children, what they know already, we have to add new information to that. That is known to unknown approach interactivity, simple language. Here, a teacher has to be very careful when they are creating content that they don't have to demonstrate their knowledge. They don't have to demonstrate their language skill, linguistic skills, that they are throwing up such a jargon that nobody understands. So based on the language capabilities of our learner, we have to choose the language. It should be simple. The transitions from one scene to another scene or from one concept to another concept should be smooth. There should not be a jerk or a break so that a child get distracted. Component of humor and fun, if it is possible to bring in that, would be definitely engaging for children. Reinforcement can also be given during the sessions. Say for example, a teacher maybe if teaching through a discussion method, there would be more children sitting around. So in that reinforcement can help the viewer also to be more connected with the learners, teacher and with the content also. And when we close down, say for example, when I'm taking a session also, I cannot randomly close down. Say for example, here I say, okay, that is it for now. Would be a random, uh, would be a great jerk for all of you. So a flow has to be maintained for the session and the close down should also be very smooth for everyone to understand and learn further so that there is no gap in the learning. 
Now, once we are aware about the elements of script, we come to a storyboard. <laughs> Most of the content, uh, like if you create a storyboard, it is always better. Why? Because it gives a very, uh, it gives a lot of clarity to the production people what you are going to create. What you create. Because not every aspect you are going to create. You are also going to create a storyboard can help you to plan content you will be prepared what all you need you will first compile everything and then finally you will create your e-content so now what exactly storyboard is and how different it is from a script so script basically we will see one script we have audio we have video that means at what line what video will play is a script we will also be writing about details sound effects there but storyboard is in, in the video, what exactly will be shown, the detailing of that, in the sense, an image drawn for that, reference images added, or maybe created graphically, that is the storyboard. This gives, especially it is useful in animation kind of programs when we are creating, and it helps to create more clear animations when we are going to create an educational program. So now you can, uh, we have uh, just seen that, say for example, in an animation, we need a storyboard. We have our audio storyboard also. What is there in the audio storyboard? It is basically the script, the content which has to be said, then the music and effects. So effects means where the audio will play in which level, maybe the sound uh, fade out, fade in of the sound or uh, the sound effects, uh, added to that, say for example, I am showing a scene of bus stand. Then I can hear honking, I can hear also the chirping, I can also hear the sound of uh, different vehicles. So these all sound effects I have to plan in advance what I'm going to create for my audio program. So this way audio storyboards are written. Then what is the need for a storyboard? As I said, it is better it is always better when we create a storyboard, the production to know what exactly we want. So rather than getting confused and creating a new altogether thing, when we share our vision with them properly, then they are able to recreate what we have planned. But if we don't, then the product can be entirely different from what you have planned. And it also makes production easier because everything is very well planned and everything is compiled at one place. And it saves a lot of time. You can create storyboards using simple pencils, uh, paper pencil, because it is not necessary that storyboard should look very attractive. It should convey what it wants to convey. So that is the aim of the storyboard. Now, what you need, uh, say for example, uh, for creating a video, what all you need? You need moving or still images. You need a computer where you are going to compile them. You need softwares for editing them and finally you are going to create your own masterpiece these are basic after once you have created the storyboard and you have recorded that that you need now once you have created the storyboard you have created a script you are going to shoot say for example there is no production team involved you and your colleague are going to shoot then you should be aware that what you want to cover so here we basically talk about what kind of shot we want to capture we get confused that, okay, this I want to show, this is visible. No. In, in e-content creation or in video, we have to be very careful for this. First of all, we need to establish the whole story. For establishing the whole story or the place, we need a bigger shot. That means we are showing the complete uh, big, uh, maybe if it is a house, the complete house picture from outside, we are showing that we are entering here. Here you can see a wide shot which is, uh, which is showing a playground. So this is telling that a playground is there, players are ready to play and a lot of audience are there. So this is the establishing shot of a story which is a wider shot. From here we get to know that through a long shot that two players are playing football. So this is a football match going. Now you can see this is a long shot. So this one you see the ground shot is a wide shot. That means it is completely establishing the scene, the next scene where two players are saying, playing, this is a long shot, where they are, 
where we can see a little detail, but still it is very wide. We can see the complete action happening and we are able to introduce our characters also here. Then say for example, somebody is kicking and this is a viewer and she is very happy when a particular player is kicking. So this is a mid shot, medium shot. Basically this is long mid shot. That means uh, when a shot covers till your waistline or below waistline, that is a long, uh, that is a long mid shot. So this is a mid shot which has been taken. Now, if we come, say for example, now we want to uh, get into the more closer uh, actions to see. So you can see here, this girl with pen in mouth having medium close up. This is not exactly close up. This is also called sometime uh, mid, uh, mid shot when sitting, but it is generally mid close up that we have, we are seeing a full, quite a big image of the girl. Then you can see these two boys. This is a close up. It is basically from shoulder it is starting. That is the close up. Then this is here you can see a big close up. Here you can see a ball and a. We are completely seeing in detail what is happening. And this is extreme close up for showing reactions. This can further go extreme. Maybe just the mouth open wide, no eyes are visible. That is also extreme close up. Based on the need, it is defined. So to highlight certain things, extreme close ups are used. All these shots can be planned by you in the storyboard that what kind of shot you want where so that your story, your content is able to convey whatever is required to be conveyed. Now, there are, uh, apart from these shots, there are certain shots which are taken from different angles, which also conveys a meaning to all of us. The top angle, top angle is this, where a girl is standing and looking up. That means the camera is at the top and looking down. So it is showing you as a lower power person and the camera is a bigger power. It is showing you like this. So whenever in your story, it demands that the object has to be shown as a small or meek animal or plant, then the top angle can be used. Then there is over the shoulder shot, which is right now not here. Over the shoulder shot is used in interviews. Say for example, right now I'm sitting and speaking and somebody wants to take the shot who's sitting across the table to me. He will take a shot from here. My only shoulder would be visible and that person's face would be visible. This is over the shoulder shot. That means I am also slightly visible that I'm there, but the main person in focus is somebody else. Then is the point of view shot. So here you can see a car racing uh, on the road. Here, this is the point of view of the show, point of view of the driver, how it is looking at the road. Then there is this Dutch angle. Dutch angle means uh, uh, it is basically some strange scenes. If you want to sh show some kind of confusion in the scene, uh, some kind of tension in the scene, so angle can be chosen where a lot of elements are visible here, you can see. But a lot of tension is also there, but there is no clarity. So this kind of confusion is uh, can be shown through the Dutch angle. Then bird's eye view. Now you know where the bird is. Bird is on the top of our head. So something from very high looking at us, but we don't look at them. That is a bird's eye view. Similarly, we have a low angle shot like the top angle or the bird eye view. We call it worm's eye view or the low angle. In that case, the camera would be lower to you. So it would be uh, looking at me from the down and I'll be looking really big. When you want to show somebody as overpowering in that particular scene, then that kind of shots are utilized. So these are some of the things which we can uh, use when we are going to create some script or some storyboard and some kind of e-content where uh, we can, without saying a word, with the use of shots, we can convey the meaning also that what we want to tell here. So now these, these are the basic elements. And now we, I'll just tell you a few tips and tricks that when you are going to uh, shoot, say for example, now your script is ready, your storyboard is ready, everything is ready. Now you are going to record. So when you are recording, even for audio or video, start before the action is starting. Why? Because 
uh, we can always cut the extra part. In the audio also, the extra part can help us to identify noise in the complete audio file. So this way we can uh, improve upon our content. And also when you are stopping the recording, stop a little after the action is over, not in the middle of the action, because then you have to completely take the action again if you miss some part of it. Similarly in audio, record extra, then later on you, you have the facility of removing it. Also you can take a lot of shots, still shots, so that uh, like extreme close up, close up to focus on some elements of the script or the content. You can take all those extra, wherever you feel a difficulty, you can add those shots to improve upon your content. Now here, what should you should not do is don't zoom extra. Just take the shots, frame the shots first based on the need of the script, then you can uh, zoom in or zoom out. But a slightly zoomed out shot can always be zoomed in. But the complete zoom in shot cannot be zoomed out. So be careful of that. If you are uh, taking a zoom shot, maybe a little extra can be taken, which can be removed later on when editing. And when if you want to say, for example, you want a movement in the action, it can be a zoom, it can be a trolley, it can be a track, it can be a pan. So when you are doing that, avoid jerk your hand should be very much fixed or the camera should be on stand so that there is no jerk in the video or audio that's a next uh, basically the objective here is to give the audience the less of the jerks in the uh, content so that they can uh, be uh, benefited from this particular type of e content So this is, uh, this is what I wanted to tell you through the presentation, but I have few resources. Now we will see the resources and we will also see how their script is written and how their video has been, storyboard has been written and how finally the resource has come out. One of the videos you have seen in the morning. So I would try avoiding that so that you can see something new and learn through that. So must have uh, a few of you must have seen these videos. I'm going to play a video first. Please carefully see it. Then we will take a, uh, take the script and the storyboard of this particular uh, video. This is in Hindi, but we have the subtitles, so it will be. I hope this is audible also to you the audio of the video which is playing? Yes, it is. It is audio. मेरा 
हो जाए पल में काम मेरा हो जाए मेहनत भी मेरी बच जाए हाँ गोल 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 धुरी से दो को बांधा एक धुरी से दो को बांधा धीरे धीरे किया सुधा हाँ यू हो गया पहिया तैया यू हो गया पहिया तैया यू हो गया पहिया तैया गोल 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 पहिया so now you have seen uh, the video uh, one of the video of a resource this is in hindi but you must have noticed the subtitles in english now we will see how this has been planned so i will first show you the script of this in english so that uh, you can understand that so now you can see here uh, this has been created at cit by professor indu kumar here you can see a script for this video program we have audio and music detail written here background music symbolic to speed then visuals what are the visuals to be played with the notes of music floating out of a flute comes the title invention of wheel you can see how clearly it is mentioned that what is wanted close up of aeroplane wheel here because we are focusing on a wheel or a round thing so close up is asked aeroplane flying so here there is no close up written because we are showing aeroplane in us in the sky so based on that then close up of the tire of a car then car running on the road so basically we are focusing on the tire first and then we are coming out and seeing that this is a car on the road where basically the wheel is implemented we are seeing that a child running on skates a man riding a bike round sun rising in the sky rotating earth what all is round we are trying to visualize here with the music and the music if you notice it is written background music symbolic to speed so something to do which connects us to speed that kind of music should be there then it starts with lyrics once a human on a downhill saw a rolling log you must have seen a Uh, an early human was standing and he was seeing a rolling log coming from upside to the downhill so here visual just focus on the visual prehistoric environment a log rolling on a downhill and a prehistoric man watching it with curiosity so for prehistoric environment what you want what you use uh, understand with this term this is also very important here to mention that it is a prehistoric environment you cannot show very furnished very well maintained grasslands and there you are going to show this so you have to show it in such a way that it looks like prehistoric then on the word roll 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 in the script it is gol 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 when he was singing various round shaped things are coming one by one and we are able to see them we are basically connecting to the idea of the goal the roll then the next line rolled rolled and tumbled down so prehistoric environment again a log comes rolling from a downhill and it reaches a field hits a tree rolls further it speeds slow down after hitting the tree and it stops so what happens we are telling that 
a roll a log is coming downhill then after hitting the tree the speed is becoming low and finally it stops every detail has been mentioned in the script here this is the value of script then again roll 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 we are giving more uh, further examples for the roll the round round thing then background music notes of music again floating from a flute then seeing it he thought that and he thought scratched his head and pondered over so it is written clearly in the words and the same is visualized the prehistoric human looks at it with curiosity he rolls his eyes he rolls his eyes to give the idea of thinking that he is now thinking pondering then scratches his head like okay right this is this can be done something like that he is indicating and we are able to reach to the uh, what we want to say i carry it i get exhausted that means when i carry i get exhausted but this can roll down on its own this is what he is thinking so here human pulling a log tied to a rope he is thinking that okay i carry it but i get really exhausted and but it is rolling on its own so everything is written here as a script and you can see we we can get into detail here a wheel rolls down over the screen and you can see all of it here in the video also and in the script also so now we will we have seen now the script but now we have to see how the uh, how the storyboard of this script looks like so i'm going to now shift to the storyboard so now you must you 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 must be able to see on your screen the first thing introduction sequence how from the flute the music notes are playing whole transformation into a train uh, wheel uh, into an aeroplane wheel which i said first wheel and then aeroplane goes into the uh, the whole aeroplane is visible to us then a car wheel then the complete car is visible to us then transition to different examples of any circular uh, round round things which are used as a wheel so these shots these are small simple drawings we are not looking at very exhaustive very fine detail but it will give us an idea it will give the production team an idea what you want as a uh, uh, as a e content to be finalized what kind of shot you need now you can here see extreme close up of the eyes because he is showing the eye movement he is thinking is pondering like this so extreme close up is seen here uh, to all of us then we have different example on the word roll 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 we have spinning gears we have the uh, this is uh, on the belt test is rotating on the belt then this is a wide shot where the log is going to hit the tree and going to stop sir pujlaya he is you know uh, doing this in the head and that is also visible here in while thinking he imagines that i keep carry it and i get exhausted that is also seen here so you can see all the shots here now you can see at the end towards the end a charkha is visible but the script has ended with something else why this has ended because after a lot of alterations and new ideas the script has ended with a child rolling the wheel as an activity as a playing activity why it has been added because children feel more connected with their kind of example so this has been added later but this is the general uh, storyboard that we are able to see the planner is able to see what he is going to finally receive as an output of this particular uh, script so this is where this is how we have to write a script this is how we can develop a storyboard and finally we can reach to our content now we'll see few more examples of different types of content so that we can understand tomorrow you are going to learn one more e content that is h5p that is interactive content you are going to create interactive content you can create any video also as interactive content or you can simply create image hotspots or different things so let's see what interactivity we are going to see here and how the script for that has been planned observe the fruits can we put them in four baskets on the basis of their color 
Let us try and put them into four groups. Drag fruits to the basket to form the four groups. Observe the fruits. Can we put them in four baskets on the basis of their color? Let us try and put them into four groups. Drag fruits to the basket to form the four groups. I'm so sorry, I was mute and nobody even told me that I'm mute. Okay, so now I'll start and uh, please close properly. So here I said in the video you have seen that the basket were given and the different color of fruits were given. Children had to classify them as per their color and they have to put it in that basket. So it was a drag and drop activity where a child would drag the red fruit and put it in the red basket. Similarly, gray fruit in the gray basket. So this way, this classification uh, content was planned. This was an interactive content. And now we will see the script of that particular uh, content here. Now you can see here, uh, just a second, I'll just close. So here you can see uh, for this uh, script is not important only for video content or audio content. It is also uh, important for other kind of resources which you are creating. So here you can see description is given. Fruits of different colors are displayed on the screen. Child has to classify the fruit on the basis of color or shape, whatever you are planning. Language, what language you are going to use, subject level, who is the audience for this uh, content? We can write that. What is the educational use? Because if it is not mapped to the syllabus, then also it will not be used. So we can map it to the syllabus. Interactivity type, yes, because I said this is a drag and drop activity. It is not a passive video which has been played and one can access it. So it has been created as a video to show you here, but it is an active activity where a child has to drag and drop. Source here is self-generated. Otherwise, you have to write the source as I told you in the morning. What is the source of the content? You have to write, give the credit or attribution of that particular content. Now you can see, this is the uh, storyboard for this. We have given different uh, apples or different images. Then we have given four baskets. 
and now uh, the objective is to develop the understanding of classification here comes another thing instruction for user in audio and video we had two columns where instructions were clearly written so here because it is not audio and video so we have different uh, instructions if you want to add instruction as text you add as text but if you want to add it on basis of on just to you know help the accessibility increase the accessibility you can add text and audio both observe the fruits can we put them in four baskets on the basis of their colors so this is what is the first instruction coming so this is for the user who is going to actually play this activity let us try and put them into four groups drag fruits to the basket to form the four groups now this is for learner now this is for developer if the user drags fruits of one color in one basket then fruit of another color cannot be placed in the same basket they bounce back so this indication we are giving it to the creator that please be careful if the child is dragging a wrong fruit then it will not be placed in that basket it will be bounced back give positive reinforcement good with clapping for proper grouping and encouragement for proper improper placement so here it means that when a child is dragging the correct fruit we can have a clap sound we can have a sound of good very good based on what content it is and then even if it is wrong the fruit is bouncing back we cannot say it is wrong we should not say it is wrong rather we can say let's try once again we can try it in some other basket with these kind of indications we can uh, give a proper feedback to the learner to improve and learn more so this is the way we are going to write uh, for this kind of e content similarly we have different sheets for other type of e content here we have uh, to create an understanding of vocabulary more or less so here uh, we can give two or more so it is more two or Uh, uh more uh, rather three or four or more this is less so we have to we can give this kind of questions and we can prepare same activity with this uh when we create this kind of script we can create more activities for the different topics and we can learn through them this is the value of script you you can see here for different types of contents now this you have seen for a video we have seen and this is for primary content we have seen this kind of content can also be created for slightly higher maybe middle level classes where you can use interactive videos for question answers and also for explanation based on that it will very it will be very helpful to them now we will see for maybe higher secondary students we are going to create lectures video lectures because not many activities we can conduct in different topics so for that we will uh, we all know what a video lecture is so i'm going to show you now a script for a video lecture so here understanding the theme travel and pedagogical approaches to transact the theme so here we have audio then we have here visuals relevant visuals are mentioned presenter is presenting this particular text then we have on screen captions what is being said here is being the uh, app appearing as a text here again we see presenter and on screen captions so that the learner is able to see them now these on screen captions can be appear on the full screen or as subtitles below so based on the need we can plan that then we have presenter and mind map for explaining something we can have mind map mind map any other relevant uh, infographic we can add everything here what is uh, relevant then again a mind map for travel has been placed here then presenter then here it is written re relevant visuals uh, say for example it, the will see the text and will see what are the relevant visuals one can also bring forth the idea as to how different species move earthworm slide so we can show an earthworm sliding tortoise crawl sheep run kangaroos hop and humans walk all these examples we can bring in as visuals so this is relevant visual has been written here we can also place all these visuals 
name or reference images here for the better understanding. Again, relevant visuals. Here, a specific city has been mentioned. Visuals of factory workers and slum dwellers are to be placed here because something relevant to them is coming in the audio part. This way, you can see that how here they have placed the visuals so that uh, which kind of bird they are mentioning. Nilkant, if somebody is confusing with the bird, they can place the image also for reference. It can be recreated or a better image can be looked for, but a reference image has been placed here. The mentioned places needs to be shown on the map. Here it is talking about a palm sized bird can be found in western part of India like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary or Kyoladio National Park, Northwestern Himalaya. So this has to be shown on map here, it has been written. So based on that, the producer or the creator can take the note and action for these activities. Visuals of students involved in planning, working in groups, showcasing their work, making presentation, all these shots are to be taken when the shooting is going on. So this way you can also create a script for your uh, video lecture where the content is the boss, but we are providing relevant visuals to bring uh, what you called so that uh, uh, one is not going to get bored with the text only or the lecture only, but has uh, various visuals for stimulus variation of a learner. So this way you can also plan your script and you can also write your script based on your content. Now we can take uh, any questions if you have, and uh, because I've mostly covered everything, we have seen a video, we have seen a script, we have seen the value of script, understood how to write a script, what are the major components of a script, we have seen all of that. So now if you have any questions, we can take them. I'll request everyone to you, please uh, be active and ask questions so that it is not only one person speaking and you all are sitting idle. Okay, I will share the scripts. I can see a few questions in the chat book. Somebody is asking for the script. We will share the this script which I have shown you. You can uh, use it as a reference. Then we have a question. If we are making the video anyway, what is the importance of the script writing? Ma'am, you must have seen in the Pahia video that what is the uh, importance of the video uh, for the script. And even in the lecture, uh, this thing also, we are planning in advance what all we need and what kind of shots we need we can give all the details in the script with, with what kind of audio, what visual are you expecting as a teacher to be displayed. For that, we need uh, to, if we create a script, we are able to give our needs, our requirements to the producer or the creator that what all we need. Even if you yourself are creating a video, it will help you to plan further that what all you need when you are going for shooting, when you are going to record the video, you are very well prepared with what all you need to capture. Otherwise, if you don't prepare a script, you can miss on many elements. Also, if you need to take some uh, visuals like images, that also you can add, prepare in advance. What kind of music, what kind of sound effects you are planning, or everything is mentioned in the script. Otherwise, some of the part will get skipped and the, your content would not be of that good quality that which you are planning to create. So script, I think, is a very uh, important component. But before script, you have to understand your learner also. That program brief component is also very important because if you are aware of your learner and the need of your learner, we are able to create 
better content. Say, for example, for these sessions, we are trying to speak completely in English because we know all the states are English speaking states. But when we have uh, participants from Hindi speaking states, we try to focus on the Hindi language so that they can understand. This is one of the elements for the training program that we try to show those resources which are in English. At least we should have certain aspect of it in English so that you can understand. But if we do it other way around, you will not be able to understand. So similarly, when we are creating e-content, we have to be careful about our learners and their needs and their understanding, and then we can create a good content. So video making link, we will be coming to these uh, in the coming sessions. Video creation, we can do re record video using our mobile phones or any video camera. For video editing, we will be having a complete session on that and we will be creating one uh, video resource also, uh, creating one audio resource also using a uh, audio tool. We will also be creating small animation here. We will be creating an interactive content also. We are also going to work on infographics, concept maps so that you can use all these resources. I will request all of you to just think of a topic which you want, uh, uh, maybe you want to create a video upon and please start planning on that. Tomorrow we will be having a session on concept mapping. You can create a concept map on that topic only and you can also create another infographic on that topic. Create on that infographic, you can create a hotspot during our interactive session and when we go for audio, you can record an audio based on that particular topic. And when we go to video, we can combine them all and we can make a nice video resource out of it. So if you want to link it, just tomorrow come with a small script, maybe two to three minutes only for which you, that topic you are going to utilize for all the contents, then you will be at the end of the week, you will be having one or two good resources with you uh, on one topic which you have decided for yourself. Uh, Monica, there is one more question. Uh, that is, if we make our own videos or a storyboard, could we use copyright as a teacher? Just a second, I couldn't hear you. One second. So there's this question that says, if we make our own videos or a storyboard, could we use copyright as a teacher? Yes, if you are making your own video, you are not taking any resource from outside. Say, for example, any image or any audio or any music, then you can make it copyright. But if you are, say, for example, taking any music from a public domain place or a uh, open educational resource website, then you have to see that resource. You have to check their uh, license. Based on that, you can provide a license to your content. There's also an interesting feedback that says, I understood that we have to first know about our learners and their needs. And thereafter, the script writing plays an important role before creating an e-content. Thank you, madam. That's good that you could summarize what we said, because that summary only tells that you at least got a hang of it, what we have been discussing from past one hour. If you have any further questions, we can take them for another 10 minutes we have for questions. You can please raise your questions. Okay, if there are no, and no more questions, then you can take up uh, the action. Right. So uh, thank you, Dr. Monica, for enlightening, uh, in enlightening us with such an engaging presentation, which kept the audience enthralled throughout, as evident from the chats pouring in. And with that, we've come to the end of the first day of the orientation of state resource groups on development of e-contents for Diksha. Mm -hmm. I hope you had a great learning experience. And I would like to insert a quote here by Henry Ford that says, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. So let's keep our brains younger and active, remain engaged and active throughout the sessions and put forward as many questions as we can because it indeed makes the 
resource person presenting the session uh, more interested in answering your queries and it makes the sessions more engaging. So uh, for tomorrow, we would like to have any one representative from